Welcome, listener. You've stumbled upon the unexpected podcast. Whether you're meant to be here or not, you might want to prepare yourself for a world of stories you won't hear anywhere else. They are, after all, quite unexpected. Gambling! A vice as old as mankind itself. It's a known fact that thousands of years ago, cavemen and cave women would bet rocks and dinosaur bones with one another. And now humans gamble in cesspools called casinos with their friends, families, and lovers. But at what price? Well, many people are willing to gamble their life savings in these cruel games of chance. Some are willing to play with even bigger stakes. As we'll find out in our next tale, one man is about to not only gamble with his own life, but the lives of others. Now, let's see if he's playing with the full deck in the card-playing cacophony of death I call... The Dead Man's Dead Man's Hand... The old dead man's hand. Any poker player worth his weight in tobacco knows the name. Heck, even if he ain't ever put a queen of hearts in your hand, or hid some aces in your boots, you might still know it. It was the hand Wild Bill Hickok was holding when he was shot in the back of the head up yonder in dusty Deadwood, South Dakota. But I ain't here to tell you about the dead man's hand, no sir. That tale's been told tells about as blue in the face as old Wild Bill himself. No, I reckon you come round these parts because you'd like to hear another tale. Well, I'm here to tell it to you. It's a story about my old friend Ray, a man who's been said to come out his mama holding a royal flush. (laughs) But that ain't the hand he'll be known for, even if he'd like it to be. No, the hand Ray will be remembered for, for all time, I reckon is the dead man's dead man's hand. It all started, as most people like to tell tales say, on a dark and stormy night. Looks like another big night for old Ray, boys. Now come on, Ray. Those sleeves look mighty long for a hot summer's night like this one. You hiding something up there we ought to know about? Sorry, James, but ain't I tell you to read them and weep? Now I don't see no weeping going on, but I sure do hear a lot of belly aching. I don't know how you do it, Ray. I really don't. You really were born holding a royal flush, weren't you? You're darn right I was. Just ask the doctor. Heck, I beat him at a game of cards later that night, too. And don't let anyone tell you different. Nobody? Not even your wife? Hey, partner. Now what I tell you, you leave the old lady out of this. Ah, heck, Ray, you're right. I guess I got a little carried away there for a second. Hey, it's okay, James. Now I know your hands ain't any good at holding playing cards, but maybe, just maybe, you could use them to pass me another beer. Now you sure about that, Ray? What you mean, am I sure? Ray don't ever fold on a dead man's hand, and he certainly don't say nothing he don't mean. Well, all right. It's just that all the boys here are fixing to leave. I mean, you already cleaned them out, and it seems to me you've done had your fill already. Doggone it, James. Don't you think I know when I've had my fill? Just listen a moment. It's raining turkeys and tomcats out there. Now, you really think I'm in a hurry to get on out of here? I know them other boys can't stand being around a winner, and that's why they skedaddled, but you, James, I thought you was different. I am right, heck. You know I am. It's just that... Just what, James? I'll just take your cockamamie beer already, would you? Don't mind if I do. Now, what did they say on over there in Sin City? To the winner goes the spoils? Well, these here are some mighty fine spoils, if you ask me.
Now, if I reckon I'm being honest with myself, what I'd wanted to say to old Ray was that he ought to go on and get back to that old lady he wouldn't talk about. They got a big house up on Huckleberry Road, and it just don't seem right him leaving her up there all alone like he did on them nights he was getting his gambling fix in. But Ray, he didn't take much to people talking about his marriage and all that. And if there's one thing I know, it's you don't want to stir up a big old catfish like Ray. So I just done let him get on with his drinking and playing cards, even knowing I shouldn't have, when all night long that storm just kept a raging. After a few hours, I reckon I ought to swallow the vinegar and tell old Ray to get on home to his old lady. Hogs and hickory, James. You really think my old lady wants me out on the roads in this? Especially after all the suds I've been drinking. I'll take you home myself, Ray. It ain't no bother. You guys live up on that big house on Huckleberry Road, and it just don't seem right to be leaving her up there all... Yeah, yeah. I know you says it all the time. Well, you can't drive me home either, James. If you reckon you can recall, you went on up to Route 37 one day honking your horn till the devil went down to Georgia. And the old sheriff done pulled you over and took your license. I said it ain't no bother, Ray. We can take them back roads. I ain't taking no more back roads with you, James. I done figure I took all the back roads I ever want to take. You insulting my ability to take care of my old lady? Oh, I didn't mean nothing by it, Ray. All I said is I reckon it... Yeah, you've been doing a whole lot of reckoning. They ought to call you a preacher with all the reckoning you've been doing. Well, I reckon I ain't let no preacher tell me how to run my life. I figure I done pretty well for myself choosing gambling over God. And now I figure... I'll go take a gamble on them old wet roads all on my loads. Oh, Ray, come on. Ray, don't leave like this. Oh, gee, Ray, don't you think you should go on and check on your wife? Oh, come on, Ray, she's all up in that big house on Huckleberry Road. Yeah, I suppose you know all the time she's alone there, James. So as you can give her the old hog poke your darn self. Just because these old hound dogs can't beat me in a game of Texas Hold'em, they think they can try and run my life in other ways. Well, I tell you what, you won't catch old Ray holding a winning hand just before you're shooting him in the back of the head like a rascal. And I reckon that was the last time I ever talked to Ray. Well, I should say, without the aid of a whole lot of them breathing tubes and whatnot. You see, the doctors, well, they done fixed up old Ray pretty good, at least considering the state he was in from that wreck. His wife, on the other hand, well, things didn't turn out so well for her. You see, while Ray was strung up in that old hospital bed getting worked on, his old lady wound up croaking after falling down them stairs when she went to close the shutters in the storm. She broke her pretty little neck. <laughs> Ray didn't take to the news so well, as you might reckon. Wouldn't talk to nobody for weeks. Just sat there in his bed like a bullfrog on a boulder and kept that motor mouth of his shut for once in his gall darn life. That is, of course, till the old man he shared the hospital room with started talking to him. Brenda. Oh, Brenda. You just gonna lay there all day like a bullfrog on a boulder, boy? Or you gonna sit up and show some respect to your elders? Go on and leave me alone, old man. Old man? You're darn right, old man. I've been firing pistols at Prairie Dog since before you was a tadpole in your mama's belly. Now do like I says and sit on up. Who are you anyway? My drill instructor? I ain't been in the military for coming up on a decade. And I intend to keep it that way. Well, since you's fixin' to ask, my name's Old Man Butler. Ace Butler, I used to be called in my card playing days. You used to play cards? He doggone right I used to play cards. Used to play them hustlers from Vegas under the table. Pretty near everybody from them Yankees on up north to the boys from that cattle country in Wyoming used to come watch me play. Why you asking, son? You play a little of the 52 card tango? You bet your bonnet I do. Best player in these parts. And I ain't never heard of old man Ace Butler either. Well, that's about right. 
If I know anything about the card players of today, I suppose they ain't got the integrity to respect their forefathers. You talk a big game there, old man. I'd like to see what you do when your hole comes up in do seven. Do seven? <laughs> Boy, looks like life gave you a do seven a few nights ago. And now you're here lying like a lame old man next to a sorry old man like me. Hey, what's this I hear about your old lady fixing to meet her maker? You don't know nothing about it, old man. Ain't none of your business no how. Besides, what would you have done in my position? Oh, son, it ain't about what I woulda or coulda done. It's about what I'd be fixing to do. And that's because I know myself a little secret. A secret? What kind of secrets an old pooch like you got for a guy like me? You know how to raise the dead like old Lazarus? Ah, heck. Old Ace Butler's gone ahead and gotten his bluff called. I done said too much already. Go on and tell me the rest. You're the man you says you is. Not like I got much. Well, I ain't got much to go home to now. We're all right, boy, but it's only because you says you're a card player who's tickled the almighty's toes with a run of sevens. And I suppose I ain't got no reason to believe otherwise. You ever hear of the dead man's dead man's hand? Dead man's hand? Why, sure, I heard of it. Wild Bill Hickox last... No, boy, clean out your darn ears. I said dead man's dead man's hand. Dead man's dead man's hand? Why, no. I don't suppose I have. Well, I suppose that's about right. Since not but a few of us old sons of Noah know about it, fewer of us have ever dared try to play it. It's a hand that gives the old rascal who's playing it a chance to right one wrong, so long as he's willing to risk his own life. Right one wrong. Boy, have I got a few of those. Now listen in, boy, because this is the most important part. The only time you can fix to play the dead man's dead man's hand is when you got the gizzards to go all in on your bet. And you better be fixing to bet a lot. How much? Whatever you think your life's worth, sonny. Oh, I don't know that my life amounts to a hill of coffee beans. Not anymore. Everybody's life's worth a good small fortune, I reckon. You itching to play the hand and make something right you done with your sorry life? You bet your biscuits I am. You brought up my old lady, well... The night I crashed my car, she done fell down the steps and broke her gull darn neck. I should have been there for her. Heck, not just that night. Every night. What I wouldn't do to have her back. Now I'll have to live with that regret the rest of my life. I reckon. Heck, I'd take the tumble myself just to keep sure she stayed alive. Bringing back the dead? That's a mighty big wrong to right, I reckon. Don't suppose I know any man who's used a dead man's dead man's hand to do that. Not sure a young gun like you could even handle it. Come on, Ace. You can't shine my saddle, then hitch me to the post. Please. I beg you. You gotta help me play that hand. Well, all right then, boy. Soon as you get out of here, you go on and be sure to visit my good friend who lives out by Dongaroods Creek. He keeps my fortune safe out there from the crooked bank tellers and the grabby hands of old Uncle Sam. It's a fortune I won over many good years of gambling. You tell him old Ace Butler sent you. He'll be waiting for you. You take that fortune and you put it all on that dead man's dead man's hand at your next card game. But Ace, you ain't never told me what the dead man's dead man's hand is. Why, it's any hand you get on the first deal. (laughs) <laughs> now you done messed up your first two seven the other night. So you best not mess up the next one if fate aims to give it to you. What's your do seven, old man? What put you in that doggone bet next to me? Oh, me? Why, I reckon I'd say my do seven was losing my old dead man's dead man's hand just the other night. Ain't you tell ghosts when you see one, boy? <laughs> The Unexpected Storytelling Podcast will return after a short word from our sponsors. 
You ever wanted to be a cowboy? Pew, pew, pew. How about a buxom young madam? Howdy, partner. Well, now you can, when you stop into Tony's old-time photos. We dress the fellas in spurs and champs and the ladies in a corset and feathers for that old-time classic western look. You can finally be the outlaw you always wanted to be, all at low, low cost to you. I started Tony's old-time photos because, well, like you, I always wanted to live on the frontier and live a simple life. Then my pa told me, well, Tony, when, when are you going to get a real job? Cowboys don't exist anymore. So I told him, yeah, well, you don't exist anymore. Ever since you ran away from our family when I was only two and died in a plane crash. Now stop coming back to haunt me and tell me how to live my life. Leave me alone, ghost dad. That's Tony's old time photos uh, with a with a Y in time for that authentic Western look. Uh, look for our coupon in the Sunday newspaper right after the funny pages. Now we turn you to your tale here on the Unexpected Podcast. It didn't take old Ray long to recover, itching the way he was to get some cards back in his hands. I'm sure he didn't take much of sleeping in that old hospital room either, on account of how spooky it had become from him being visited upon by a gold darn ghost. Soon he was up and collecting that old man's winnings from a lifetime of gambling down by Dongerud's Creek. And he was ready to bet it all on his dead man's dead man's hand for one more shot to make things right with his old lady. Too bad for Ray, though, when he played the old ghost friends and his cards come up in his hands as a three and an eight. Off suit. I'm of mind to say these cards stink. Almost as bad as a coyote and sauerkraut stew. Eat up from inside the boots my grandpappy died in. And to think, I bet it all on this. My first hand. My... Dead man's dead man's hand. I sure hope that old ace butler was fibbing to me about my fate. Old Ray was right. Next to a do seven, there ain't many worse cards to get in a man's helping in hand than a three and an eight. But Ray, he wasn't no ordinary man, no siree. If anyone could get out of a hole like that one, it was that darn fool Ray. Well, look at here. Another eight in the flop. Then I'll pick up this three here on the turn, and now I got me two pair. Now to put on my old bluffing face. Let me just stop and tell you right here now, ain't nobody got a meaner bluffing face no Ray. Some say a Ray's bluffing face is like a bull who's been roped after he's had his corn dinner and he's holding in a righteous ripper. Yes, something like that. Look at all these sons of guns, folding like cowboys in a cactus patch on laundry day. Suppose everyone knows better than to look down Ray when he's holding a hand of cards and has per near a million dollars in chips pushed to the middle of the table. All right. Call him, partner. Hoo-wee! I done beat you with a pair of threes and a pair of eights. Better than old Wild Bill himself. I can't think of a more appropriate dead man's dead man's hand than that. Not so fast there, sonny. Old man is butler. Well, what in tarnation are you doing here, showing on up out of the blue like an ailing stomach after drinking Doc Murray's Monday morning moonshine? Uh-huh. Uh, oh, well, I'm here to lay down my hand. The dead man's dead man's hand that put me asunder them a few weeks ago. And the very same hand as old Wild Bill. Two aces and two eights. Now go on, read them and weep like my great aunt Hilda when her turnips done went bad after a long dry summer when a plague of locusts come and ate them all up like they was a turkey pie on Thanksgiving. Wait, go back a little bit. To what? The turkey pie? Before that. My great aunt Hilda? No, no, before that. My hand of playing cards? Yeah, that's what I reckon I meant. Ah, well, that's right, my boy, they done beat you. But don't worry, I won't be claiming your chips. Heck, money will do me about as good as giving culottes to a cowboy stuck in a cactus patch on laundry day. What do you reckon you want, then? You see, playing cards like I'd done most of my life didn't allow me as much fun as I'd like to have had. Most of the time, teaching them old sharks a lesson, I had to be pretty serious, you see. So what I'd like, sonny boy, is for you to become my own personal clown. (laughs) 
wish I could say old Ace Butler was just clannin' around himself, but I reckon I ain't never been too good at exaggerating. Poor Ray never looked sorrier than he did wearing that clown wake up and losing hand after hand to old man Butler, performing acts of the odd variety after each fold. For instance, there was a time Ray lost a hand and had to get a doggone tattoo of Ace's granddaddy come out of his rear end. <laughs> Then there was a time, after a particularly stinging loss, that he had to go down to the county clerk and legally change his name to Bozo Beefy Butt. But that was life for old Bozo, having risked it all on one hand. As a gambling man, I reckon he wouldn't have wanted it any other way. Please, Ace, I'm begging you. Just give me another way. I can't go on doing these silly jokes for you. I got too much doggone pride in just one pinky to have to keep putting up with this. I don't care if you've got more pride than Miss Piggy when she's giving pork chop sandwiches and she's got to take two o'clock train to Hungertown rather than filling her grumbling belly. You made your bed, now I reckon you got some lying to do. <laughs> One more hand, old man Ace. Well, that's all I ask. Who One more hand? Boy, I've been giving you one more hand all these long days and nights, and all you got to show for it is that silly tattoo and a name no circus would touch with a 40-foot tent pole. What's the matter, Ace? You too scared? You think dumb old Ray might actually got a chance to beat you? Even if it's no better than a chicken's chance at escaping the cleaver when it's being choked by an 800-pound gorilla wearing a seersucker suit? <laughs> Oh, Ray, even in the middle of a long, hot, sweaty summer, you can depend on the weather to change. But old Ray, why, he never will. It don't matter if he's playing a game of cards or playing for his own life. He knows how to beat a man at his own game. We'll tell the day he croaks. All right, boy, you want to take another gamble? Fine by me. But let's make this a good one. You lose... Which we all know is about as sure as Shirley Temple selling lollipops on every lonely street corner in La La Land. And I'll be sure to steal that last bit of pride you got saved in your sneakers. Joke's on you, since I ain't never worn a pair of sneakers in my whole sassafrassin' life. And with that, the game was on. They met at a table in the desert in a spot no man or ghost has been able to find since. Ray took his first two cards, and wouldn't you know it, he got the old deuce seven this time. Worse than his original dead man's dead man's hand. Even knowing Ray like I did, I done figured there was no way he'd get out of that situation. But what he'd done next shows me just how little I know about old Ray after all, I reckon. Deuce seven, eh? Well, ain't that a kick to the hound dog's haunches? No matter. Old Ray seen worse hands than that and walked away with chips in his pocket. Won't be his first do seven. Likely won't be his last, knowing his luck. It's all about what you do with the cards you've done been dealt. What are you muttering about over there, partner? Got something you'd like to show me? Mayhap I do, old ace. First, I'd like to see what you got in the flop there. That can be arranged. Well, I'll be a pig in a pot of porridge on February 31st. If he ain't just turned over two more sevens and another two. That gives old Ray a full house, I reckon. And you know what they say when a house is done full up. Gotta kick an old alley cat like Ace back to the curb where he belongs. All right there, kiddo. I'm calling it. Let's see you can beat my nice little flush here. Reckon it's about time I send you to the sewers with that other waste. <laughs> Not so fast there, partner. Full house. <laughs> I can see it in your eyes. You was hoping for some predictability. Maybe like the milkman or a paper boy or even in TV. Well, turns out I don't want you to just read them and weep them, old man. I want you to read them, cry your little eyes out for a while, and then give me back my life and the life of my wife. Just like you done promised. Oh, <laughs> Reckon I should have known how you'd somehow beat me even after I deliberately handed you a two seven. Don't know how you keep doing it. Figure there's something pretty special about you. Well, like you said, deal's a deal. You want your wife back? Well, 
Go on and have her back. Honey? Is that you? I can't believe it. I've missed you so much, darling. You look as beautiful as the morning. Hey, honey? Why ain't you talking? It's me. Ray, come on. Let's get out of here and live our lives again. Wait. What's that you're reaching for? No. Don't tell me you're gonna shoot me with that there gun! Well, I'll be a freakfurter and a fat boy's fist after he's dunked me in mustard, rolled me in relish, and squeezed me in a bun. You're a woman of your word, ain't you? Now come on over to old Ace Butler here. I may be a gambler like your old man was, but unlike him, I know when to fold him and treat a lady to a night on the town. What say you and I hit up the old hootenanny in the town square tonight? Maybe later we can keep on dancing on old Ray's grave. <laughs> and that's how old Ray's gambling days finally come to an end. I'd say it'd be nice to know he learned his lesson, abandoning his old lady like he did all them nights. But Ray didn't get to the luxury of coming back from the grave like old Ace Butler did. And that's because Ace didn't fix to tell him the one final step in laying a dead man's dead man's hand. And that's being you never let the other man call the bet when your back's to the sun. <laughs> What's that you say? How do I reckon I know? Well... Guess you can say Ace ain't the only ghost to come back from playing the dead man's dead man's hand. After all, I know how to play a few cards myself. Like the stories you hear on The Unexpected? Consider sharing our show with family and friends, along with any strangers you come across. Provide a little something unexpected to someone else's day. You can find and subscribe to our show on iTunes, Google Play, or anywhere else you stream your podcasts. We're on social media, on Unexpected Show on Twitter, and The Unexpected Podcast on Facebook. You can also find out what we're up to on our website, www.theunexpectedpodcast.com Thank you for listening. Now let's get back to our bone-chilling tale. Well, I used to think everyone accepted losing when they walked into a casino. Yet poor Gambling Ray, well, it seems the only way he could take losing was lying down. But... Like we all must do in life, he had to learn how to play the hand he was dealt. Even when some of the cards came up a little... unexpected? I hope you'll take another gamble on us with our future tales. Just don't get caught with a... scare of aces? Ah! <laughs> get it? <laughs> a scare. A scare instead of a pair. <laughs> uh, Oh, it's late. I'm going to go home. The Unexpected Storytelling Podcast is written, produced, and directed by Andrew Socek and Eric Bergstrom. Each story is somehow a work of fiction, and with the exception of public figures like Tony Danza, any resemblance to persons living or dead is coincidental and unexpected.